joke. And it's definitely on the border. So I want to apologize around to anyone who has offense, have any offense to this joke, but I thought it was so funny that it was worth sharing it with you today. A priest who went into the country to pay visit to a 92-year-old church member whom he hadn't seen for some years. She welcomed him into the parlor, and while she made tea, looked around and saw this beautiful oak pump organ and a cut glass bowl sitting on top of it. The bowl was half filled with water, and a condom was floating on top. Astonished and shocked, he quickly turned away. But after the tea, curiosity got the best of him, and he asked her about it. She said, oh, yes, with enthusiasm. While in town last year, I found a package on the sidewalk. The direction on the bed said, keep wet and put it on the organ to prevent disease. And you know it's worked. I've never had a cold. <laughs> I thought it was just too funny to, uh, to take a, uh, a chance. <laughs> for a little bit of a, a reading, uh, before I start speaking, I want to read from 2 Timothy chapter 2 and 23 from the Mirror Bible. And I'm trying to give you something that you can really use and contemplate and help you grow and help you to be a better spiritual human being in this time of so much breakdown between relationships between people. Sometimes we just need wisdom to know a little bit how to deal with it. This scripture says, avoid foolish questions that do not educate anyone, but only breed quarrels. Isn't that good? Avoid foolish questions that do not educate anyone, but only breeds quarrels. In your position as someone completely dedicated to spirit, there is no virtue in winning an argument but losing the, and losing the person. Not worth losing the person over arguing on the difference that you have with them. I would much rather have you exhibit a sensitive cur curiosity towards all people. Oh, so this is what you believe. Now, I don't see it the way you do, but that's interesting how you believe instead of being threatened. Because the reason you're threatened by somebody else's belief is because you're not sure about your own belief whether you admit it or not. Amen. Amen. If, you're, if you're clear about what you're believing, then nothing is going to deter you from that into uh, a, a debate of argument in any way. Skillful ed skillfully educate them and keep your cool under pressure. Isn't that good? Your gentle way of instructing those who oppose you will lead them to see what God believes concerning them and give them the best possible chance to acknowledge the truth. I just thought that was just good advice for all of us to realize. And you know what? I expect more out of us. I expect more out of me to get up here and to, and to talk from the level of consciousness that we talk on and whatever, and then we go out of here and become short of the glory, so to speak. We need to carry this consciousness that we've been brought to out into our everyday life. We need to be aware and not be caught into the traps of ego, which is always to divide and to separate and to conquer and control. So today's message is not, I guess, a deep message, and it's a message that I've given before, but I thought as we're ending 2022, which I don't know about you, bye-bye <laughs> 2022, it's been an interesting year. A lot of opportunities have been given us in 2022 to rise to that higher place in ourselves. And if you're here, and made it through 2022, good for you. Give yourself a hand. That's 
That's right. Some of you have been through some very difficult things physically, mentally, spiritually, and in every level. I know in this small uh, community that much has gone on this year that has challenged a lot of us. But we've endured and we have made it. So I kind of title this kind of through letting go, finding happiness. And I do think one of the greatest spiritual arts that we can accomplish is the art of how to let go. We tend to hold on and hang on to things that absolutely are beyond any use to us in our present state of life. Stuff that happened 20 years ago, 40 years ago, 30 years ago, six months ago, we tend to hang on and let it define us. And when you let the circumstances of this outer world in which is still, I'm sorry, but in the 3D world stage, the ego is the God of this world. That's just the way it is. Even the scripture says that the adversary, probably it says the devil or Satan or whatever word it uses, uh, you know, but it really is saying that it sets upon the throne and reveals itself as God. But that's all in here. This is the world in you and I. Who's sitting on your throne? Now, Charles Fillmore teaches us the metaphysical meaning of the throne is power. And it talks about the 12 thrones of God. It's talking about the 12 manifestations of the power of God within us. The throne is the place of authority in you. Who has the authority of your thoughts? Who has the authority over your feelings and your emotions and your actions? Your ego? Or does the Christ consciousness, the mind of the divine, set on the throne of your life and your being? So this is the ego's world. But the good news is the world of the ego is crumbling. You say, well, it sure doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh, my God, I've never seen such a mess in my life that's going on all over the world. Let me tell you what. This happens because when something sees its own defeat and demise or crucifixion, it, it shows its muscle for the last time. It, everything that is left in it begins to emerge out of the sea of humanity. This is a good thing that is happening because the hidden agenda of the systems of this third dimension ego world that has been hid in secret societies, <laughs> in the archives of religion institutions, for sometimes thousands of years are no longer hidden. For that which is hidden shall be revealed and shouted from the housetop. There is nothing anymore that can be a secret. Whether it's the Illuminati or anyone that you can name that has controlled us from the outer realms is no longer hiding anymore. This is a good thing. It's a good thing when your toxicity in your body that you don't even know about, and you all got it sitting there, if you're breathing the air of this world, trust me, you're breathing toxicity. You're probably eating it and drinking it, And most of you go, well, not bothering me. 
But if you keep doing it, it will reach a level in which it will emerge up on your body in some forth, some symptom of a disease. Rexia or many, many rashes and all kinds of things that people run to the doctor to get some kind of medicine or a pill to take because we don't understand that in the body politic itself is all of the toxicity that has gone on for thousands of years that has built up to the point that it cannot be hidden in the body politic any longer, but it is emerging. Now, here's the good thing about it. As it emerges, what should be emerging is the healers. At the same time that this is emerging in the world today, there should be the emerging of a people coming together that's ready to start healing and start reordering and repattering a world that is dying. This is why I want us to be more than a church. And just coming here on Sunday going to the filling station and filling our tank up for the week. And they'll go out and still drive like crazy. <laughs> We're here because I believe we have said in our contract a deep yes to show up at this time. I hope that makes sense to you. My goodness, just on... Netflix and Hulu and what are these things, Gaia, you can just about expose yourself to anything that has been hidden from the population of the planet. It is now right out there. Are you looking at those things? You should be. I mean, it's right there in your home. You don't even have to go anywhere. I have learned more things in this week of <laughs> just watching about the different symbols of religions and what they mean that I had no idea that has changed and shifted much of my belief system than I had last week when I was here. And there's nothing wrong with shifting your belief system the more you understand, the more enlightenment you get, the more it takes away the doctrines of man that has made the intelligence of the word in you of no effect. Are you with me? Yes. 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 <laughs> wow. <sighs> the art of letting go. <laughs> First thing I want to give you today is letting go of your need to be right. There's so many of us who can't stand the idea of being wrong. Wanting to always be right even at the risk of ending great relationships and causing a great deal of stress and pain. For ourselves and for others. It's just not worth it. When you feel the urgency. You need to jump. The urgency to jump into a fight over who is right or wrong. Ask yourself this question. Would I rather be right or would I, would I rather be kind? That's a state from Wayne Dyer. Course of Miracles says it, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Both. Tim says he wants to be both. Okay. <laughs> what difference will it make? It is your, is your ego that bit. The next thing is to let go of control. It's a big one. Be willing to let go of your need to always control everything that happens to you around you. That means situations, events, people, etc. Whether they be loved ones, mm, 
co-workers or just strangers you meet on the street, just allow them to be. You want people to allow you to be, but you want to change everybody else to yourself. And again, I say that happens because at some deep level, people are not fully clear about what they believe. Therefore, they look for others who believe that to validate them. That's what denominations and organizations of religion and other, other organizations are, are people of like belief who are looking for validations by other who believe like they do. But what I'm concerned about, if they're not open to hear others, how are they going to grow by all agreeing in one belief system? We need to be open here at heart, like to even hear other people's ideas and beliefs. Let, by letting go of all control, it gets done anyway. The world is won by those who let go, but when you try and try, the world begins to win, Lao Tzu says in the Tao. Next, let go of your need to blame. <laughs> Let go of your need to blame others for what you have or, have or don't have, for what you feel and don't feel. Stop giving your power away and start taking, here's the word, responsibility. What a great word, responsibility to spawn again. Re, again, spawned. Respond. How are you responding to situations? Are you responding as a separate human being with a body identity in which the ego lives? Or are you dealing with it as a spiritual divine being incarnated into the human story? Let go of self-defeating self-talk. Oh my, how many people are hurting themselves because of their negative, polluted, and repetitive, self-defeating mindset. Don't believe everything your mind is telling you. And of course, like everybody else, they confuse mind and brain. They mean brain. Don't believe everything your brain is telling you. Because anything that your brain is telling you is what somebody outside yourself told you. And you downloaded that program in you. You need to hear your mind, which is the divine mind of God in you. And you will hear a different you than the you you think you are. Are you with me? Don't believe everything your brain is telling you, especially if it's negative and self-defeating. You're better than that. Eckhart Tolle, Tolle says, the mind is a superb instrument if used rightly. Used wrongly, however, it becomes very destructive. Next, let go of your limiting beliefs. It's not about what you can or cannot do or what is possible or impossible. From now on, you're no longer going to allow your limiting beliefs to keep you stuck in the wrong place. How many people you know that's stuck? They're just stuck. This is what I believed. I've always believed it. I'm always going to believe it. There's nothing you're going to say that's going to change my belief. Until their beliefs become like a prison that imprisons them and limits them to grow and to learn, which is what we're here for. We're not here to get stuck. We're here to mature, evolve, and grow and flourish. A belief is not an idea held by the brain. It's an idea that is held in the mind. Let go of complaining. I, by nature, am a complainer. I'll admit it. I, co I come from a long line of complainers. So when, when, I, when I get out into that, that ego self, it's very easy to start complaining. But it's my responsibility to say, to wait, wait a minute, I need a shift in perception. 
I got another choice I can make if I choose to do it. The power is in the choice to shift. Let go of your constant need to complain about these many, 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 many things, people, situation, events that make you unhappy and depressed. Oh my God, if I talk about all, all the things that I see going on in this world politically and whatever, it's very depressing. There's no way I'm going to be happy to just fill myself with that all the time. I'm not against some news, check in with some news and see if the world's still here and then get out. <laughs> you know, do it in the morning. Okay, it's still going. And check out. And each one of you have to find the right, the right news feed that you feel good about. Now, that doesn't mean find the one that believes like you do. <laughs> but you need something that is very more neutral and is out for the truth, as close as the truth can be without an agenda politically. For me, for Bonnie, <laughs> it is Free Speech TV. So I'm going to give it a plug right here. It's the best thing that's out there and probably the least known is Free Speech TV. It's not some fancy Productive, productive news media is just common people sitting there talking and absolutely trying to give us the best truth. I'm saying that's for me. Maybe that's for Bonnie. But maybe you have something. But you need to find something, if you're looking for it, that you're not attached to politically. You're not attached to for validation. But you are willing to take that in a neutral way and do what? Contemplate it. How do you contemplate it? Qualify it. Qualify it by how? Before you qualify it, what do you do? Check with your inner self. See if it you do not judge it right or wrong, good or bad or evil. You hold it in the neutral place within yourself and see if it resonates your own innate intelligence. And then you qualify it into your belief system. Right. Right. The ego wants you to believe it because they said it. Because I heard it on the news. Because my favorite politician said it. Or my favorite news person said it. That's the wrong way to do it. You're, you're leaving out the whole step of contemplating it. Holding it in neutral. Not judging it. And see, does it resonate with my own innate intelligence? If it does, it will end up in your consciousness. And then you qualify it in your belief system. And when you qualify that in your belief system, you just raise the vibratory frequency of how the cells replicate themselves to a different vibration and when cells that make up the liver for instance begins to recreate itself on that vibration it begins to become a liver at another vibration <laughs> let go of the luxury of criticism <laughs> Let go of your need to criticize things, events, and people that are different from you. We are all different, yet we're all the same. We all want to be happy. We all want to love and be loved. We all want to be understood. We all want something. We have to let go of criticism. Let go of your need to impress others. Stop trying so hard to be something that you're not. Now, I do my best to work on that. I don't know if I always come over that way. Because I've been accused, you know, of having this huge ego because of what I do. But I constantly work on that, on myself. To not let myself feel specially called. Now, that was drummed into me in the early part of my ministry. Like, oh, my God, I never heard anybody like you. You're, just, you're God's chosen. You're God's man of the hour and whatever. And I went, oh, well, hmm, I am? Because I've never felt that way inside. I've always just felt I'm me, and I'm just this open channel. 
doing my thing and sharing it with people. And I still feel that way with you. I've made it clear I don't want to be your guru. I know I need some kind of way to identify me, so we settled on spiritual leader. But I'm not ta- I don't want to take away from what should be leading us, and that is the Spirit of God. That's what should be leading us, is the Holy Spirit, whatever you choose to call it. I'm just a facilitator of someone that is doing my best to let it lead through me. That means me has to get out of the way so the I am in me can come forth. And that's why things get crazy up here to you, and I don't ever finish anything, and I don't stay with my subject or whatever, is because it's, I'm not the source of this information. Amen. Somebody help me. Well, he just doesn't finish anything that he says. <laughs> then take the responsibility to finish it for yourself. Research it. Look at it. Contemplate it. <laughs> Quickly. Follow your bliss and the universe will open doors for you where there's only walls, Joseph Campbell says. Two more. Let go, and here's one of my favorite. Let go of labels. I said if the world could let go of labels for 24 hours, we, have, we would transform the planet. If we just all kept saying, I am. I am. I am white. I am black. I am Christian. I am Buddhist. I am Muslim. I'm a Democrat. I am. I am. We, it's that label and, and, and you know what's powerful in 3D? Politics, religion, government. Why? Because we put the power of the I am to it. And we've given the label the I am power. If you attach anything to I am, you give it power. And that's what we've done. I am an alcoholic. I am an unbeliever. I am an atheist. Every time these labels have been so empowered that the world is the manifestation of our labels. I just have a time with labels. Gay, straight, this, that absolutely does not register with me as a neutral spiritual being having a human story. All you want to do is label my story, my human story, and let me forget my created story. Let go of labels. Stop labeling those things, people or events that you don't understand as being weird or different. Try opening your mind little by little. Minds only work when open. Wayne Dyer says the highest form of ignorance is when you reject something you don't know anything about. If you don't, if you don't know, have walked in my shoes and my moccasins, and you're going to try to tell me and label me, you don't know what you're talking about. And vice versa. I don't always know what you are about. And last, let go of your fears. Fear, it says, is just an illusion. And that's a tough one for people because fear is rampant in the world today. But you can understand where you place your attention and your energy even in an illusion, it becomes real with your power. Illusions are made real with our power. You follow that? Of course, in miracles, it's very clear to say that love and fear cannot exist as two realities on the same level of consciousness. One is real, one is not real. And I've used the very simple, I think, uh, idea of uh, light and day is the best one. 
One of the most amazing beliefs that's out there to me is the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. That is one of the biggest illusions that people believe in. Why? Because that's what you see with your eyes and your senses. It sure looks like it. I put out, I, but my bet on the sun is going to go down today in the west and come up tomorrow in the east. But it doesn't. It doesn't. The sun doesn't move anywhere. The sun just sets in the middle of the universe and the earth spins. And when the earth is on this side and the sun hits it, that's day. But when it gets to this side where there is no source to it, it has an absence of its reality, which is night. There's no source to night. What causes, oh, the moon is the source of, no, it's not. The moon does not cast darkness on the earth. But sun casts light. So there's a source of this day out here called the sun. But when the earth turns and there is no longer the source of light, there will be an absence of that light and you're going to call it night. And you're going to make light and day two things that are equal to each other. You see how we buy into illusion? And let me give you this scripture that I've used for 30 years. I just think it's so powerful. I think it's in Psalms 115. For they made images, idols. Don't you think about that. The people made idols and imagery in their mind. And it says that those who made them, now get this, became like them. So if you have an image of a vindictive, angry, mean Old Testament God who's very uh, gender bias and homophobic and all the things of the Old Testament that are abominations in some way or a, another. But you make an image of that God in your mind, even though that may, that's, I don't believe what God is, but you can make God anything you want in your mind, and then you attach it to a belief system which begins to transfer your energy and power to an image that is not real. And with what is real, it becomes real with your power. So my image of God is that me, my people, my nation, my race, my whatever is the right one. Everybody's the wrong one. And I'm going to go to war with them. And I'm going to pray to my God that we win the war. And the, and, and the whole war is based upon my idea or image of God. And believe that God wants me to win over these people. So if that's my image of God, and they became like them. So now I'm going to go out and get rid of these people because the God in my head is saying they are wrong and they shouldn't be here. And therefore, it's okay to go kill them. And I'm sorry, there's people who think they're God when the other side gets killed. Look what God has done for us. Hallelujah. <laughs> What's going on in the world today? The Russians have a certain idea that has validated them to go and to kill innocent people. And every time that they do it, they are closer to their agenda. Then you have the other side who thinks it's a horrible thing and whatever. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say that everybody is reacting to the image that they create in their own mind and they become like it and they do what they think that God would do. They do it. If your God doesn't like Jewish people, you will end up anti-Semitic. If you think... 
God doesn't like black people or white people or brown people or whatever people. Hmm? You're going to become racial. If you think God likes men better than women because God created Adam. <laughs> but he didn't create her, Eve. She was taken out of him. So she's not even a created being, you women. I'm coming down now. <laughs> Don't you think that's not in the root of why men have controlled this planet is because women were not created by a creator, but is of man. Man is her head. And that is being preached today and this morning. In Judeo-Christian literalist churches. It is being preached that Jewish people are of the seed of Cain. And that they uh, hold the seed of the serpent of the devil. And every time you kill a Jew, you're killing Satan. And that's what Hitler believed. Let's just talk about it a minute. I'm old. I'm just old. I don't care. <laughs> the older I get, the more I don't care. <laughs> and don't give me on gay people. Do you see, I hope you get what I'm saying to you. That all of this is not coming from a true being of creation out there. It's coming from what we have miscreated in our own head. Take a breath. It's getting late. I'm going to close it up here. I'll tell you folks, I don't know. I've never been in a place in the 60 years I've ministered where I want to less play church. I just don't want to play church. I'm so tired. Of the people that have suffered in pain. Who've committed suicide. Because of the fact that they have been put into a category. That God does not love them. Therefore I don't love them. Because God will kill them. Therefore I'll kill them. There's a scripture in the Bible. Where it says that Jesus said to them. They will cast you out of the synagogue and they'll kill you thinking they've done God a service. Did you know that's in the Bible? They will cast you out of the synagogue and they will kill you and say, look what God has done. To me, the scariest people on the planet are gun-toting fundamentalist Christians. I'm going to say it. Yeah. That's a scary bunch. That's a scary bunch bunch who are doing this thinking that they're doing a God of service to get rid of the evil and the bad which they're projecting on something they don't even know about. I, I, I got to say this today. The thing that is so upsetting to me in this time of polarization uh, of how we're divided in this country. I, I don't know when the last time I saw these two sides sit down in the same room and talk to each other. What is wrong that we can't even get in the same room and have a discussion with each other? Instead, we take sides. We've got our own media, news media that we get with. Or if you're a liberal, you got your news media. And, and we just, we, we, we're tribal. We're, we're like a... Uh, we just join up with people who believe like we do and get nothing done. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President. The President has spoken. I hope I'm making some sense. I hope spirit through me today is telling you, let go, let go, let go. Let go of the fear. Let go of the hatred. Let go of the racism. It's not serving you. It is not moving you forward. It is not evolving you. You're not becoming the full capacity of who you were created to be. Let it go. Yes. Yes. Let it go. Let it go. Yeah. Remember that song? I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. My heart is open wide. 
I'm only here for God. Oh, no more trouble, no more strife. Then I see the light. I'm free in the spirit. I'm only here for God. Oh, I release and I let go. Let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. Oh, no more trouble, no more strife. I think I see the light. I am free in the spirit. Yes, I'm only One more time. here for God. Oh, I release and I let go. Let the spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. Let go. Let go. Let go. Well, I hope I, well, I'm not going to say I hope I didn't upset somebody. I hope I did. <laughs> I hope somebody out there felt a little something that they needed to feel. But I'll tell you what the world needs now is truth. It needs truth. I want to say love, but it's truth that makes you free. I said it's truth that makes you free. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we come to you through the Christ, the door, the door that takes us beyond the third dimension. In that place that you said you prepared for us that where you are, we shall be also. So help us to come on up a little more. Says, come up hither in the sun realm. No dragons abide here. Dragons of old thoughts. I let go today with the exhale of my breath. I let go. I don't even know exactly all I'm letting go of, but you do. So again, I take in a deep breath and I exhale and let go. Let go. Come on, let go. Exhale. Blow it out. There goes another one. There goes something else. I let go. If it's not serving me, if it is not a part of my contract or agreement of being here, I choose in this moment to let it go and let the presence within me fill me fuller and fuller with its own light. Bless this message today and let it reach the hearts and the minds of those who have the ears to hear. Bless heart light, most high. Bless it. Use it. Use each and every one of us for your plan and your purpose. Take a deep breath and say with me, and so it is. And so it is. Say with me, I am free. I am, free. I am whole. I am whole. I am that I am. I am that I am. So be it.